Hey there, sassy people. Welcome to Mature Sass. My name is Linda. My channel is all about having fun with style and fashion and sometimes nails and skincare. But today, it's none of those. My friend Sheila over on Inside Beauty with the Old Girl has invited me to join in on a tag. It's like seven weird or strange or quirky things about yourself. And so I am game for it, Sheila. I'm going to join in. So <laughs> make sure that you go over and check Sheila's channel out, guys. She's going to be linked. I'm going to put both of hers because she's done two of the seven quirky things about herself. Sheila's channel is, she's such a sweet, sweet soul. She's beautiful inside and out. And um, she always ends her videos with, an inspirational message. She is absolutely wonderful. You have to check her out. But right now, if you want to know the seven quirky, strange things that I came up with about myself, keep watching. Okay, so I just grabbed my coffee. You may want to grab me something to drink too. And I thought, let's just do it Mass Monday style. So, these are seven weird, strange, or quirky things. So I had to kind of think about it. You know, it's kind of like turning <laughs> and looking yourself in the mirror to kind of, I guess, think, okay, what's strange about me that you all would probably think is strange? So number one, <laughs> um, I have to have the toilet paper coming over. You know, like when you pull it, it needs to come over, not underneath. And I, <laughs> it was funny. But you know what? I'm not like, I don't think I'm real anal about it. When um, a couple of years ago, when my family came down here, we had the family reunion here in Florida. I noticed that Brianna and Tanya, when they, they used the bathroom up front, the guest bathroom, and so they um, they had it coming from like underneath, but you know, after they left, I just changed it. So, you know, I could deal with it for four days. Plus, you know, I just used my bathroom, so I didn't really have to deal with it. I think I went up there one day and then it was like that. But anyway, that's number one. Now, number two, you guys have, pro I'm setting my coffee down. Um, you guys have probably become aware of this because I do it a lot. I'm a labeler. Yeah, everything has to be labeled. And I didn't really like think it was a thing until once again, during family reunion time, my nephew Brian was laughing at me because... <laughs> He went in the pantry to get something. Not only do I have the things labeled, I have them labeled with pictures. Is that weird? <laughs> I think if you have to ask, it probably is. But anyway, I mean, you know, when I thought about it, I took a little picture for you guys. I said, that's kind of like a little bit sleeping with the enemy. Remember when Julia Roberts had to have all the canned goods and everything lined up. Now, that was a bit extreme, in my opinion, but I need things to be labeled with pictures. I don't know why. I guess it has something to do with when I taught school um, because everything in my classroom was labeled. You know, the kids, it says, you know, lunch boxes here, book bags here, your, you know, your books go here. Everything they knew where every little thing went. So I think that that's what that stems from. Uh, number three, I have to have a shower or a bath before I can go to sleep at night. I just do. And I don't care if I, you know, you know, you get up in the morning, you have your shower after, you know, you've done your walk or exercise, just started your day. You know how we have, we start our day with a shower. You know what? I'm noticing that there's that red vase still there. I forgot to put it away. But anyway. Uh, now sometimes like if, 
I remember a time when I had company and we had been to the beach and everything. We didn't get back until late and then we ate, you know, like right after we got back to the house. So it was like about eight or nine at night. So I had already showered to get all the sand and gook from the beach off. So that's different because, you know, I wasn't going anywhere. So by the time, you know, like 11 o'clock rolled around, I didn't have to shower again. But I have to have a shower. I just can't sleep if I if I don't. Um, literally, I have like dozed off and fallen asleep, you know, whether I was watching a movie on the couch or whatever. And before I could just, I can't just get up and then go in there and go to bed. I have to get in the shower <laughs> and change, you know, my PJs and everything. Then I can rest for the night. Does anybody else do that? Is that weird? All right, so number four. Um, I'm a minimal adult hugger. <laughs> now, this has really nothing to do with COVID. I think it's probably uh, amplified it, but I'm just not a big adult hugger. I mean, of course, if it's my family, you know, like that, I, or if I'm in a relationship with somebody, you know, I'll hug, you know. But I'm not a big adult hugger. I don't like just people running up to me and hugging and kissing on me. I just don't. And I have never been that way, you know, except like with family and my mom, you know, coming up. That's different. But, and you know what? I used to feel so bad at school because there were a couple of ladies that wore really heavy perfume and they are huggers and <laughs> I would like detour to make sure that I was like out of the line of fire I know that sounds terrible because they would and, well the thing is too I have a great sensitivity to certain scents and things you know just like with my sensitivity to dyes and stuff certain perfumes just nauseate me and and if the scent is lingering on me it's going to be with me all day and I'm gonna feel sick all day and a headache um so they wore those I don't wear a real heavy perfume I think I told you all I wear Aqua de Joya by um uh, Armani Giorgio Armani and that's the fragrance that I have been wearing for years because it's a, a light almost floral citrusy scent and I love it that's the one that I can tolerate I I've worn it for years but they wear those real heavy perfumes. And first thing they want to do is come up and hug you. Well, then when after they've hugged you, you smell like that. And I would get sick and feel sick all day long. So I just don't. And then some times they would just be standing in the hallway talking to me. And after they've left, it's that fragrance is still on you. That's too much perfume. <laughs> but anyway. I said all that to say this. I'm a minimal adult hugger. Now, with my kids at school, not that way. You know, they would come up, especially like if I'm sitting and doing something, and they would come up and hug you from behind. I love that. You know, give a big old hug. Or when I was greeting them, when they would be coming in the door in the morning, I'd say, good morning, good morning. They'd reach and hug you. That's different. I can hug on my kids. It's just adults. I'm a minimal adult hugger. I don't like to be grabbed and hugged and kicked. Mm -mm. Not so much. Number five. Um, <laughs> this is funny. I don't like people using my comb and brush. That is a no, no. And my brother David used to drive me insane. I would leave toiletries back home in West Virginia so that I didn't have to like constantly be taking stuff back and forth whenever I would go home, you know, and visit. So I would leave comb, brush, lotion, baby oil, all my toiletries and stuff in the cabinet. And I would put it like in the back of the linen cabinet. And when I would come home, everything would be used, used up. And I would just be so upset with him. I'm like, just leave my stuff alone. <laughs> But I don't like, and like with the comb and brush, I just told him to keep it. He could just have it. He said, I didn't use it. I said, you did. I know it was you. So, because <laughs> he was the only one still left at home. So, I um, I would just go out and buy me new, a new comb and a new brush. I don't like people using my comb and brush. Once again, my scalp is sensitive. And so, like, if you have flakes or whatever in your hair, 
it transfers to me. I, I end up having dry skin, you know, itchy scalp, and uh, oh, I can't stand it. Now, I have gotten better over the years because there was once upon a time I would take my own stuff to the salon with me to the hair salon and they you know they would be like well we have barbasol and it you know it, it sterilizes everything we keep everything the combs cleaned and and you know sanitized before we use them on the next person no they didn't because i've seen them put it in the drawer and then take one out the drawer and anyway and that barbasol to say that it's killing the germs that made me feel even like <laughs> more like that I'm thinking what else is swimming around in that blue liquid Anyway, I don't let people use my comb and brush. No. <sighs> and now I have gotten better because when I go to the barber, I don't take my own comb and stuff. But when I get home, I do wash my hair. I just do. All right, then number six. I don't let people drink from me. I don't like people drinking out of my beverage. If you want a beverage, then I'll order you one. But I don't like people coming up drinking out of my stuff. You know, don't grab my drink and drink out of my straw and then give, I don't want it after that. <laughs> I think I was even that way when I was dating. Because I, I remember one time this guy said, okay, you gave me a kiss when I got here, but <laughs> I can't have a drink. No, it's not the same. I don't want you drinking out of my stuff. <laughs> I know I have issues. That's why I'm single. Um, and then number seven, it goes into the single thing. I think I'm a runaway bride. <laughs> I have been engaged. And I think when a relationship is like going that way and it's time for the final commitment and to get married, I can't do it. I don't know what it is. I can't do it. And so um, I really think, you know, when I stand and take my vows before God, I'm truly going to mean exactly those vows. And I really don't think I've met anybody that I think would follow through like I would follow through. Like you never know in life what's going to happen. And I know, guys, I should just take a chance or should have taken a chance. I doubt that I'll do it now. But... You know, I was thinking, okay, what if something were to happen to this person? I would stay in the marriage, you know, for better, for worse, and for richer, for poor, sickness and in health. What if the person got sick? I would stay in the relationship and, you know, nurse my husband or take care of him and be by his side. I couldn't always be guaranteed that the people that I was with would follow through and do the same thing. And I know I probably just overthought things. I know, I know. But I just couldn't do the final commitment. I just couldn't do it. I don't know. But anyway, those are my seven. Let me know if you think that they are very strange, weird, quirky. And if you would like to join in the tag, I'm sure Sheila would love to hear your quirks too. I know I would. So make sure that um, you let me know if you're planning on doing the, the tag. Again, it's seven weird, strange, quirky things about me, about yourself. So thank you for coming by and listening to my weirdness. <laughs> I hope that everybody is doing well, staying safe and healthy. Definitely make sure that you subscribe if you are not a subscriber and keep it sassy. I'll see you soon, guys.